So here with Darren Bowen with, with the Creek Candy Lures in Bowling Green, Kentucky. You make all kinds of crazy lures out of cedar. Absolutely. Everything we make is out of cedar. I like the way the, the cedar works. I like the way you can, you know, with the sanding process and just the overall uh, finished product. So when we say handmade lures, I mean, this is handmade. You start out with a, with a template and you draw the picture. Absolutely. Cut it out, you know, work it to the, the next stage, start shaping it up. And then you completely hand paint these as well, right? Absolutely. I start out with just the bare wood with different patterns, some of them that I've made up myself. So then I just take it on a scroll saw and I'll cut it out. And now, like you said, you'll have this rough flat version, which mm -hmm. looks really like nothing. But then you got to get your top profile. So I have another pattern to where after it's done, I'll, I'll lay it out and I'll I'll cut the top profile here. So from here, a lot of it is sanding, a lot of it is sanding by hand. and painting. Absolutely. I will use a little oscillating sander to get the, the rough part down. How did you get involved in this? Actually, out of uh, a little bit of boredom. One day I was up in the shop and, uh, and really I saw an old bait and I was like, you know, I think I can, uh, I think I can make that. And I did and it came out pretty nice and I was like, hmm. So then, I picked out another one and I made another one. So what ended up happening was I ended up having a, a coffee can full of blanks. Mm -hmm. So then I said, well, you either need to learn how to do the finish process or quit doing this because you're just yeah, wasting yeah. your time. I mean, they're, they're really bad paperweights. You can't catch fish on there. You can't right? catch, <laughs> exactly. The biggest challenge was the painting. Mm -hmm. So uh, in, in the class that I, that I taught that year, one of my students come up and he said, uh, you know, my dad paints baits. I was like, What's really? The yeah. Exactly, yeah. really? He said, he's got a website too. I was like, okay, now we're on to something. So he told me what it was, and uh, and I tell you, he's amazing. Bill Barton is his name. He's been a great friend to me. Here uh, in Kentucky? Here in Kentucky, okay. uh, bblures.com. He gave me some pointers. My mother-in-law purchased me a cheap beginner version of an airbrush machine. Mm -hmm. So uh, you can do t-shirts too. I've never tried a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, if this fails, who knows what Wait, I could give we'll, it. A, on your jersey, we'll match uh, your favorite lure on your jersey hey, with your lure. There, there, you there you go. <laughs> so, but this airbrush machine sat in a closet for probably six months because I was so intimidated. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I don't even know how to turn this thing on. If I go buy all this paint and I push this button, paint's going to fly everywhere. <laughs> and guess what? That's exactly what happened. <laughs> so, but Bill really gave me some good pointers, but you got to have patience. If, if you're not patient, because look at, the, look at the steps. You start from here, mm -hmm. then you got the big profile, mm -hmm. then you have the top cut. Mm -hmm. After you do the top cut and get it sanded where you want it, you have to epoxy it. Yeah. And I use a two ton epoxy to really seal the bait, make it waterproof. Also, when you paint your white base coat, you have something to really, you know, for it to stick to gotcha. and, and the paint just really pops. Let's walk over here and watch this next process. And I mean, you know what I'd love to see? I'd love to see you paint one of these. We can do it. Is that how Fishnet got its name? Maybe. Paint, paint lures? It may be. <laughs> Next, we'll do our, our green stripes. This is how you're getting that bluegill brim stripes on there, huh? Yeah. It seems like if you get a favorite lure, you never can get enough of them, first and foremost. And it, somebody will quit making it. And that's really why I make a lot of the baits that I do. People are saying, I can't find this bait. Can you make one? And those have turned out to be some of my best sellers. So we'll take this off here. Now it looks nothing like it did when we started. That's just the regular painter's tape that you've cut out and made a notch for a gill. Yep, I put it on a little piece of manila folder paper. You see, I'm putting more paint on the actual stencil. And you leave away and you've got your little... Oh yeah, nice. So you're gonna put the name on there, Creek Candy. It's a good time for me to ask you, where did you come up with Creek Candy? I was making a bait. My exact words, I said, man, that looks just like candy on a fish, right? for a fish right there. And I was like, and it was in a, in a bait to fish in the creeks. And I was like, Creek Candy. Creek yeah. candy's got a twang to it. So now we use uh, use the epoxy. This is where you get your pop right here. Here's where you decide, do you want to add a little fleck to it? Crankbaits, especially custom-made crankbaits, they may run from $10, $15 to 
300. They're outrageous. People will spend whatever it takes to be competitive. And there's no way that I could pay that kind of money for a bait. <laughs> the biggest thing I have about with, with my baits is I have people when I do different setups and whatnot, and, and I think it's pretty cool. They're like, man, that's too pretty to throw. I'm like, no, I want you to throw this, you know? I've got the bills in here, the jitterbug type bill. I'll put the hooks on her and she'll be good to go. She'll be ready to rock and roll. So we'll that's get a, this one on the rack. That's a beautiful looking bait. So Darren, the good thing about customizing your own bait and hand painting it is really the, the options are endless. Now this is an example of, of similar to what you just made. You can do anything. I mean, you've got flat sided baits, uh, you've got uh, square bills, you've got baits that look like mice or rats, you've got some beautiful frog patterns down here as you can see. Top water, deep divers, bucktail on the end. I mean, really the, the options are endless and they're one of a kind. One of a kind, that's like this. This, I, design, I call this the root hog. I mean, it's just a different, big old fat belly on this thing, and this rascal gets down, and I mean, that tail just, just wobbles. Well, hey, I really appreciate you taking your time out and doing this. I know you've probably got orders, and uh, you know, people may be on back order to get a couple of these things, but. And we're easy to contact. I mean, on, we got a Facebook page, we've got our website, www.creekcandylures.com, and it's a brand new site that I'm working on, but a lot of the products are on there. But if there's something special you want, like maybe you've seen here, you just gotta let me know. You probably love that too because you never know what it may inspire for you. Absolutely. Hey, well, thanks for giving us a tour yes, today. Sir. I had a great time. I did too. And, uh, Absolutely. I, you make me want to go throw some crankbaits. So well, you know, Drake's excited. Creek's right over the hill here. <laughs> Let's give it a shot. <laughs> thanks a lot. All right, thank you, Jay. Yeah.